Good morning, Quadcopter101 here. And today's shout out goes to Solomon, Uzodinma, and Hamster Racing. Both were first to say first in one of my recent videos, and both win a shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter101 here with a review of another neat drone. Hey, about a month ago, I reviewed the Bugs 20 electronic image stabilization drone, and I liked it a lot, actually. But there was one thing I didn't quite like about it, and that was it wasn't very portable. It was a, a good-sized drone, similar to the original DJI Phantom 3. You know, it's quite a big drone, okay, which makes it not very portable, okay. You, know, you need to more or less carry that around. <laughs> not in a carrying case. It wouldn't fit in your backpack. It would fit outside your backpack, maybe, but not in your backpack. Well, not a month. Not a month has not even gone by, and look what uh, MJX has put out. Uh, this isn't available yet as of the date of the release of this video, but it's coming soon, folks. And this is the Bugs 12 electronic image stabilization. So, what is the Bugs 12 EIS? It is a folding drone, about the size of a Mavic, uh, but with electronic image stabilization, same as the Bugs 20. In fact, most of the features of this drone are exactly the same. As the Bugs 20, except think of the Bugs 20 now as a folding drum. Okay, um, that's what it is. Okay, just about all the features that are available on the Bugs 20 are available also on the Bugs 12 EIS. So let's go over them. Uh, first off, again, this is a folding drone now. Now we have a folding drum, making it extremely portable, very portable, easily fit in a backpack, take with you anywhere. Um, it does have true 4K video at 30 frames per second. That's a big plus feature of this. Uh, however, most folks, um, especially those that are uploading to YouTube, are going to probably use the second feature. You can switch it to 1080p at 60 frames per second, which is not too shabby, folks. And that's what I'm going to use, folks, when I go flying, because um, 4K just overpowers my laptop and is very difficult to upload, too, folks, to YouTube. So that's why I use 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now, um, again, it takes 4K, and we're talking, when, it, when you do use 4K, that's 3840 by 2160 pixels. Again, true 4K. It also records, of course, to an SD card, an onboard SD card. Now, for both the 60 frames per second and also especially for the 4K video, folks, don't get a cheap card, not even a Class 10 card. Class 10 car cards might even have hiccups trying to record 4K. You're going to want at least a U3 card. I don't know if you can see that or not, but see the little U with a 3 in the center there? I'm not sure. I don't think that's focusing. I'm, I hope it's focusing. <laughs> but that's how you tell folks on your card. Look for the the term U. Look for that U there along with a 3 in the center of that U. That'll tell you you got a 30 or a U3 card. That's fast enough speed to record uh, 4K video. You are going to want that U3 card. Um, you don't need to get a huge card, folks. 32 gigabytes more than enough, but you would definitely need U3. Okay? Now, I mentioned EIS. What is an EIS? That's electronic image stabilization. This automatically stabilizes the video uh, with an onboard processor, folks. I, I've been asking uh, vendors to come out with onboard processors on drones. Since the only one I've seen do that in, uh, for the past few years has been the Tello, <laughs> the little cheap Tello, which does a darn good job, folks. But I was hoping others would come out soon after the Tello. Unfortunately, <laughs> MGX is the only ones I've seen that actually put out a uh, drone with a good, other than the Tello, with a good onboard electronic image stabilization um, this one does a good job, or at least the Bucks 20 does. We'll see if the, the Bucks 12 does the same thing. But the Bucks 20 did a darn good job of uh, electronic image stabilization, keeping the video s steady as the drone would bounce around in the wind. Normally, you'd need a, uh, a gimbal, a stabilized gimbal, a mechanical gimbal, to get you that type of stabilization. But now we're doing it electronically, folks, and uh, I like that. I like to see that. Um, it does have, up with that in mind, Although this doesn't have three axis gimbal or two axis gimbal, it can this can be positioned up or down remotely using your remote control, uh, the lens, I mean, the camera lens. So if you want to look at the ground, you can do such with the remote control. And I'll go over that, how to do that with the remote control, control shortly. So it does have up down view and it actually can be pointed 90 degrees to look directly down or straight ahead at zero degrees. Um, it does have, of course, have GPS, as a good GPS system, along with 
optical flow sensor on the belly here. Now the GPS helps you maintain a stable hover outdoors, folks. But this can also be, I don't recommend doing it, but you could also fly indoors with stabilization using the optical flow sensor on the belly here. Uh, the optical flow sensor also comes in handy if you don't have a very, you know, if you have just minimum amount of GPS uh, reception, eight, you need a minimum of eight satellites re uh, rece reception to get a uh, good uh, uh, stable hover. Um, but even at eight satellites, uh, it's, it could wander a bit if you did not have this optical flow sensor. This optical flow sensor, what it does, folks, is it looks at the ground directly beneath the drone and uses its view of the ground to help maintain steady hover of the drone. Um, this works best when you're close to the ground. When you get up very high, you know, above 10 meters or so, this becomes less effective, and that's when the GPS system really comes into play then at that point. Um, other things about it, we have brushless motors on the drone. You want brushless motors for the power, for the efficiency of a brushless motor, and also for the durability of a brushless motor. They last a lot longer than brushed motors. Brush motors, you nearly always have to replace them after a certain amount of flights. These will go on indefinitely as long as you don't crash the drone and try to keep flying the drone while it's crashed. You can, you can damage motors and especially the electronic speed controllers of a brushless motor, but um, you'd have to work at it to do such. So um, it is powered by, let's remove this battery. I'll show it to you here by a 7.6 volt LIH, I'm sorry, <laughs> spit on it, <laughs> by a 7.6 volt LIHV battery, 3400 milliamp per hour in uh, available power from the battery, 3400 milliamp per hour, there you go. And that is predicted to give the drone up to 25 minutes of flight time. So, you know, that's significant, significant amount of flight time for this drone. Um, it does have FPV capability, of course, and you can you, uh, view that FPV through your phone um, using the MRC Pro app. And that FPV video, real-time video, is good up to about 450 meters. And you can even fly beyond the, uh, the FPV, if you can see the drone, that is, up to 600 meters using the controller. So the, uh, with that, I'll go over the controller here right now. Let's do that since we're talking about it. This controller will start from the top. This antenna on the right is fake. There's no ant uh, antenna wire going up in here. But this antenna on the left is not fake. There is actually an antenna wire. I don't know if you can see it right there, folks. But that's what gives this that 600 meters of range capability. Um, the uh, other buttons on this include uh, this scroll wheel on the left normally would be your rates control. I think that was the rates control on the uh, Bugs 20. This one does not have a rates control. You can't switch between low and high rate on this particular drone. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but it is stuck at one rate. We'll see what that rate is when we go flying, folks. See, uh, I got a feeling it's gonna be slow rate for uh, to maintain uh, the electronic image stabilization. Uh, other buttons on this, you have an automatic takeoff and automatic land button, but first, before you press that automatic takeoff and automatic land button, you have to first uh, press this arm button. And when you press this button, that the motors go into idle, so don't press this button while holding the drone in your hands or you might get hurt. But pressing the button, the motors go into idle, and then you can press that automatic takeoff or automatic land button to put the drone into the air or to bring it back to the ground. Um, and let's talk about bringing it back to the ground. Just in my backyard here, I was just flying, uh, testing it out, and tried to land it manually. Um, the motors did not seem to want to shut down, so I recommend... When you do a landing, use that automatic land button to bring it down, and then those motors will shut down. And uh, MJX, if you're listening, again, I tried to land this manually, and it would it brought it to the ground, but those motors just stayed in idle. So you might want to see about that, um, because that could be a safety issue. But again, if you're flying this, folks, I recommend using this automatic takeoff and automatic land button. Uh, do not try the automatic or manual landings, or else you might have difficulty shutting off the motor. <laughs> Enough said on that. Button on the right here. This is for uh, lights. Quick press turns on the lights on this. This does have lights on the belly, very bright lights. By the way, these only come on when the drone is in the air, when it's flying. These do not activate while the motors are not activated on the drone. So if you're wondering if your lights are broken, they're not broken. They only come on when the drone is in flight. Okay. Um, a long press on this button. I took it, take it back, folks. Here's where the rates is. <laughs> I forgot that. 
You can switch between low and high rate by holding this button down here on the right. Darn. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, the scroll wheel on the right. This is for raising and lowering the camera lens on the drone. So that's that button or that scroll wheel. Uh, this button here is for taking photos and videos. A quick press will take a photo. A long press starts the videos. And always remember, you need to stop that video by a one more long press after the before the turn off power to the drone or you will lose that video. Always remember to, to stop your video recording or you will uh, have problems viewing that video. The file becomes corrupt, corrupted if you turn off the drone before stopping it. Um, other things, this button here is for automatic return to home and landing. So if you want the drone to come back automatically, you press that button there and the drone will fly back and land. Again, this is your arm switch and this uh, uh, controller is capable of being switched from mode 1 to mode 2 and let's see if I can do that folks uh, right now we are in mode 2 um, I think you and what that means is mode 2 is the throttle is on the left side and right now I'm in high rate I want to put into low rate um, let me show you the features that are on here there's telemetry on this <laughs> that's what we're at here but you can switch to where you're putting the throttle on the right by um, holding down this button while turning on the controller and I think now we are in mode 1 on the right well, maybe I'm wrong but there is a feature I have to go into manual hold on hold on I will show you right now hold on <laughs> okay I read the manual <laughs> I was halfway right okay you hold this button down the red uh, arm button while turning on the controller and this is puts it into a uh, mode switching mode and to change to mode 1 you've got to press this button here, the return to home button. I gotta hold it down maybe. There you go. You hold it down and now it switches to mode one. So now the throttle is on the right. Now since I'm a mode two flyer, I'm gonna switch it back to mode two. So I'm holding that button down, turning it on in mode switch mode, holding this return to home button down and we are back into mode two with the throttle on the left, okay? Um, other things about it, again, I mentioned telemetry. It shows the battery power of the uh, drone along with the reception uh, signal strength, along with the uh, uh, power uh, battery power of the controller. Is that showing up? Here, let me adjust it so that shows up. Bring it up a little closer. Battery power of the controller, signal strength of the controller, uh, distance and height to the drone, telemetry, uh, GPS, whether the GPS is on or off. You can turn the GPS off, folks. By the way, let's talk about the switch here. Always make sure to have the GPS on if you're outdoors, folks. Don't go outdoors with this off or you might wonder why your drone is wandering away from you. If the drone is wandering away from you and you know you have sufficient satellites, I guarantee you probably have this switch turned off. So you can't turn the GPS off. Why would you want to do that? If you want to fly it around in sport mode and altitude hold mode, and just for sport, you can turn the GPS off. So again, make sure the GPS is on. Um, other things on here, number of satellites being received. Right now I'm at zero since I'm not connected and I'm indoors. And again, lower high rate of the drone telling you what rate you are in along with uh, what mode you are, whether the throttle's on the left or the throttle's on the right. Again, mode two throttle is on the left. So that's the controller. Let's finally go over, uh, I forgot to mention the, this uses 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, five gigahertz Wi-Fi. My usual spiel here, folks. Before purchasing this drone, make sure your phone indeed is capable of receiving 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Not all phones can receive that type of Wi-Fi, okay? Um, if you get this and your phone does not have 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, you'll be very disappointed when you find out that your phone is not working. Uh, your phone is not able to connect to this drone. You will not be able to view the video or use the advanced features of the app. You can still record on that micro SD card by flying it with the controller, but again, you won't be able to use those app features. And what are those app features? Okay, the, this again uses the MRC Pro app, uh, available on Google Play and iTunes. And with that app, it gives you FPV video, real-time video from the drone as it's flying along with advanced uh, flight control features of follow me, orbit position where it'll circle, waypoints where it'll go to different points on the map, and headless mode uh, if you want to do crane shots with the drone. Um, also, you can adjust the camera settings with the app, uh, such as resolution, brightness, saturation, uh, there's special effects. Uh, you can adjust the ISO settings along with white balance. 
and finally uh, it also includes telemetry on uh, via the app you can view, view telemetry items that you can also view on your controller so what do you get in the box real quick before we go flying um, you get uh, the user manual the long user manual I recommend reading this in an entirety folks before you go flying uh, and along with a quick start guide for those of you that are familiar with uh, GPS drones and just want to get in the air um, other things you get the drone um, it's available with one two or three battery versions it looks like based on the box I'm getting I got the two battery version you get spare set of propellers two you know for uh, A and B propellers which <laughs> which are two different shapes by the way and along with uh, connectors for connector braces for the propellers in there and uh, screws also for that and a screwdriver for the screws along with a charging cable and I forgot to mention this 3400 milliamp hour battery is charged through a micro U no it's not micro USB this is type C USB cable uh, via a wall charger do not try to charge this big battery in your laptop or your computer via USB port, use a good wall charger, a two amp wall charger or larger if you got one to charge this. Otherwise, you will be spending days trying to charge this on your laptop. <laughs> laptop just does not have the power to charge these big batteries like this. So, and also, finally, you get the obligatory Bugs stickers. So, that is the MJX Bugs 12 electronic image stabilization. I'm excited to go fly. Let's go do it. So, hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and a somewhat breezy day here at uh, uh, Pleasant Ridge Park. Uh, wind's about nine, pop, nine miles per hour, folks, today. So, but we're, it'll be a good demonstration of the stability of this drone, especially its electronic image stabilization on a breezy day. I hope the wind's not making too much noise on the uh, microphone, but let's get this started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is turn on the drone and you hold down this switch here until you hear the beep and put it on a relatively flat and level surface. Now I'm taking off from a uh, moving pad here because the grass has come somewhat wet today and I don't want to get my drone wet and I also don't want it hitting these propellers. Let's make sure the propellers are not clear. We're going to have to redo this, folks. Oh, hold on. Okay, we have it started. It's on the pad. I'm turning on the transmitter and connecting it to the drone. And we notice in our LCD screen that it, that flashing compass there, that means we need to do the compass calibration. So that's the first thing we need to do. And for compass calibration, notice that the lights are blinking yellow. Yellow and light green all the way around. That means we need to do horizontal turns of the drone, like so, until those lights change color to green. And there, we have green lights. When we got green lights, put it nose up and rotate again until the front lights change color to red. And we got red lights. Okay, compass calibration is complete. So next we need to do is connect it to the um, phone, the Wi-Fi to the phone. And also I need to uh, connect my, or turn on the app and wait for sufficient satellites to fly. So hold on, folks. Okay, this is the MRC Pro app available on Google Play and iTunes. Hold on, folks, while I adjust my <laughs> improvised landing pad. Uh, moving pads, actually. <laughs> okay, we are ready to go, actually. We have 17 satellites, and uh, we should be good to go. So, uh, first thing I want to do is start the video recording. And remembering that this button here, we're going to hold that down. And we check on our screen to make sure that the drone is recording. Now, again, I have this set to uh, 1080p at, let's double check that. <laughs> so, I do have a set. Here, let me hit stop recording. But here's where you check. No, I had it on 4K. It defaults to 4K. We want to be on 1080p, folks, at 60 frames per second for this first flight. And I'm back there. Okay, back to 1080p. So, let's start that recording again. Recording. And to start the motors, we hit this red button here, that lock switch. And then to take off, we're going to hit the takeoff switches here. So I'm opening the starting the motors. Okay, and then hitting automatic takeoff. Now let's check the stability of the drone. Very stable, especially with that optical image stabilization. 
let me get in the picture and say, how do you like my shirt today, folks? <laughs> Straight from California. <laughs> okay, first thing we're gonna do is, okay, we got a good wind here. I'm gonna go out forward a bit, plop it there, and then we're gonna go up higher in the wind and see how it withstands this wind until we see Lake Erie. Seems to be withstanding the wind quite nicely. Very stable up there, very stable. And there's Lake Erie in the distance. I'm not gonna go too much higher because of the wind, but I'm gonna push forward and go forward into the wind. We'll head down toward the um, bean field down there. And we're going down there, let's lower the gimbal a bit. Oh, there we go. You know, it's, it's relatively smooth gimbal as compared to others. <laughs> but this is doing really nice, folks. Very stable on my screen, looks well. And when we get down to the road, we're gonna do a turn. Very breezy today, look, look at the cloud coming. cloud going across the bean field, freshly harvested bean field. But I got to tell you though, folks, it's really slow. And the reason it's slow is for the, you know, to aid the image stabilization. I'm going to turn to the left. Let's see how our left turn is on this. Okay, let's give it a little more left turn. Now notice how it tilts because of the wind coming from that direction. Let's, let's stop it right there. Hold it right there and see if it levels out. Guess not. And that's because again because of the wind, folks. Okay, let's turn it again slowly toward me now. And push forward again. And the sun's gone behind the clouds. And while we're going forward, um, let's try I'm gonna long I'm gonna stop it right there. And I'm gonna increase the rates, folks. Holding down the rate button. And we are in high speed right now. And then pushing forward. Let's see if it increases speed a bit. Oh, yeah, it does. Quite a bit. This is high speed. I'm just going to this end of the field. Slowing down. Slowing down. And then I'm going to go back into low rate. Okay, see it bunching around because we were in high rate. Then going back to low rate. And from that point there, I'm going to turn away from the sun so the trees are lit up a little better. And going back up from that direction there, I'm going to turn it toward me. There I am down on the ground here. Let me see if I can lower that. Okay, lowering the gimbal. Let's bring it uh, back toward me and lower it at the same time. right a bit and trying to keep myself in the picture as I'm coming back pushing forward not doing a good job of keeping myself in the picture but here it comes in it comes up to me you know this is impressive this drone here um, it is doing a good job of that image stabilization especially with this wind very good job I gotta say Okay, raising the gimbal back up again. Now, look how it's tilting, folks, because of the wind. Okay, so that's, you know, a limitation of this electronic image stabilization. Um, especially if you got wind. Okay. <laughs> so, just to let you know, there are limitations with electronic. You know, I'm pointing it toward the wind now, and you don't see that tilt anymore. So, that's the limitation of uh, electronic image stabilization. Um, you, it's kind of hard to counter that um, wind. Let's turn it this way. You'll see it bend again. Okay, see how it tilts again? How it's tilted? And see how the video is tilted in the video? Here, let me sync it up while we're doing this. So, again, the limitation of electronic image stabilization. On a windy day, when the drone tilts like this, you will see some tilt, unfortunately. But other than that, so far, it's nice and steady. You know, stable video, even though that drone is bouncing around. Let's go forward again, forward and up, back up to see Lake Erie 
are raising the gimbal up. The camera lens is heading out toward the Geary. Just to see it one more time. From over there, we're going to do a return to home. Going up a bit higher so you can't see Lake Erie. There it is. Okay, from there I'm going to activate return to home and landing. Let's see how accurate that return to home is. It's coming back. Beautiful day. Look at that sky today, huh? Huh, folks? <laughs> Clear blue sky over the lake. Okay, it's going to start descending here shortly. Still recording. Coming down, coming down. I'm not going to let it go all the way to the ground because the grass is wet today, folks. We had rain last night. So I want to stop it before it gets to the ground. We'll make an estimate of how close its return to home and landing is. <laughs> I want to limit the time that this might be in wet grass. Coming down, coming down. It looks about, yeah, about a meter, a meter off. Okay, I'm not gonna let it touch that. I turn the home button, I press it one more time and that stops the descent, so not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay, um, before we, I forget, let's stop the video recording here because I need to take a photo. So, see a photo. One more. <laughs> and one more. Okay. And one more for the Gipper. <laughs> so, that's his photos. Let's try those advanced features, folks. Well, first off, everybody loves to see Follow Me. Let me step back a bit. And select Follow Me. Drone's camera keep pointing at the drone. It's relative distance. Activate it. Follow Me. Activate it. And starting the video camera. Video camera was not started. Can you see me? <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, now keep in mind there's always going to be some error between where where my phone thinks it is and where the drone thinks I am. Okay, <laughs> where the drone thinks that position is. And that's why you're seeing me off to the left of the screen, folks. That's the error that's induced by uh, GPS follow me. There's always a slight bit of error. Noticing a little bit of lag here, folks, too. And frozen frames. Well, let's go toward it. Let's start running toward it. <laughs> if you call this running. <laughs> okay, running toward it, it bounces a bit. How about running away from it? No, it's smoother coming away, but going toward it, well, it bounces a bit too, as you can see there. Let's see if you can see that up close. Here, watch this. See? So, Follow Me has some limitations. <laughs> so coming out of Follow Me. Next thing is circle position. But for that, let's bring it over toward me. And hit orbit flight. And swipe to the right. And this does a 10 meter, I got it set to about 10 or 11 meters, I forgot. But notice how it goes down as it goes into the wind. And then coming away from the wind, it should actually climb. As that barometer thinks it's changing altitude because of the wind. <laughs> yeah, it goes up a bit. So yeah, I got the, it set to 11 meters, circle position. I guess the center of that is over here. But it's doing a good job of circle position. So that is the circle position stopping it. And next one I want to try is waypoints. See if waypoints were or actually headless mode, headless mode. Bring it over. Toward me. We point it that way so uh, headless mode direction is that way so I'm gonna to have to pull back but headless mode is activated 
and lowering the gimbal a bit. Going up a bit higher. I'm going to pull back on the stick. That should go backwards. And up and away. The river flows, flows to the sea. <laughs> the ending of Easy Rider. I always like to do that. Showing it up and away. And wherever that river flows. <laughs> Coming back down. Okay, that's the headless mode, folks. i got to turn off headless mode before I forget. Coming back. And lowering the drum. And the next thing we want to try is waypoints. Bring it down a little bit more. About that height there. I am going to click the map in the lower left corner. There's Pleasant Ridge Park. We're going to select satellite view. Zoom out a bit so I can see it. First thing I want to do is let's fly or er, select the points. Point selection. Let's go over toward that field there. And toward me. And then there's another field over here. And over here. And then back to home to home. Well, four points I guess is about the max it'll do. But let's hit submit in the lower right corner. And let's see if it does that. Double fly preset. And there we we have just activated waypoints. Going to the first waypoint. Over by the baseball diamond. And turning, going to the second waypoint. Heading toward waypoint number two. Halfway there. By these trees, turning, going to the third waypoint over by the baseball diamond, just south of the baseball field. Oh, it does waypoints out rather nicely, folks. Rather nicely. I kind of like it. Going to waypoint four. There. And what's it do at waypoint four? Does it come back to me or just stay there? Let's see what it does. Plops. Okay, that's waypoints. So <laughs> now let's turn or go go back to normal view. And it's pointed that way. Let's turn it toward me. Twisting back toward me and fly back toward me. So, oh no, everything seems to work on this. It worked nicely. Um, I kind of like this one. <laughs> it's good. It's folding. Um, nice stable imagery. Nice blue imagery. Uh, the battery on this is, I still got tons of battery. <laughs> you know what I haven't done? Let's demonstrate the 4K camera, folks, and how I'm going to do that. Uh, right now you're seeing the 1080p 60 frame per second camera. Let's bring it in. Okay, syncing up the cameras. Right now you're seeing the 60 frames per second video. Uh, I am going to switch it to um, 4K. However, you might not see it in this video. I'm going to upload the 4K video separately so that you can see raw 4K video from this. First off, I'm going to stop the video recording. Next, Next thing, thing I'm, I'm going to do is go into uh, uh, settings, camera settings, and select 4K. Okay, now we are in 4K video, folks. Again, I'm going to upload this separately. If So look for a separate upload. Starting recording of 4K. 4K recording is started. And going up again to show Lake Erie one more time. Up, up and away in 4K. <laughs> So, uh, there we go, a little battery. So, right now we're restricted to 30 meters up and 100 meters out. That's okay, that's more than enough range for what I want to do. So, we're 30 meters up, and there's Lake Erie. Um, let's do a slow rotate from up there. Slow rotate. It's going to tilt again because of the wind. Showing the area. 
I don't want to show too much of uh, the sun. <laughs> See, the wide dynamic range in that camera is not that... I don't know if it's good or not. I don't know if I have it turned on or not. Maybe there's an on-off setting. But as we point toward the sun, it gets, you know, it gets dark as we point toward the sun. And then as we move away from the sun, it brightens up. Again, the sun's really low in the sky, though, folks. I fly early in the morning, and that's kind of a problem right there. So let's bring it back down now. Coming down from up there in 4K. And that's the 4K video, folks. You gotta show me in 4K, of course. Coming around, slowly coming around. And rotating toward me. So, yeah, again, I'm going to upload this separately as a separate upload so you can see the pure 4K video from this drone. And coming down and hitting stop. Stop recording. So that's 4K. Okay, uh, we are almost out of power. Almost. But with that in mind, Let's try, what haven't I done? Right, let's put it in a higher rate. And also, let's switch back to 60, 1080p 60 frames per second. 1080p 60 frames per second. So we're there. And uh, I want to go to higher rate. Oh, no, I hit automatic landing. I don't want to automatic land. Automatic rate is the right button. And am I high rate? Or did I just turn it? No, I turned the lights on. I haven't showed you the lights yet, folks. But there's the lights on this thing. So coming down. And lowering the gimbal. Starting the video recording. Getting underneath. And doing it up and away. In 1080p, 60 frames per second. So you should see that. And coming back down from up there. And raising the gimbal. Coming back down. Look at those lights, folks. <laughs> those are bright. Bright lights on this thing. Oh, oh, return to home and landing. Automatic. And that takeoff pad is over here. So let's see how the final low battery return to home and landing is. Just to my camera. And let's turn those lights off. Lights off. Quick press turns the lights off. This time I, let me see if I can stop that and land on the, uh, well, well, it's pretty close. Yeah, I can't stop it, so stop at a video recording. So that is the MJX Bugs 20 electronic image stabilization. Actually, not a bad drone. It works, works very well. So I hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101, signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.